Hey everyone, I'm back with another SAT Biology video. Today we're going to talk about everything you need to know regarding genetics. So it's going to be a lot of vocab and quite a few examples, so hopefully you'll get the gist of it if you've never learned genetics before. Phenotype refers to the physical traits in an organism, and genotype refers to the genes responsible for the expressed traits. Dominant traits will be expressed in the phenotype over recessive traits, always. So if something is dominant to something else, that is the trait that will be expressed. Dominant traits are also typically represented by a capital letter, while recessives are lowercase. Different versions of the same gene are called alleles. And when two alleles are identical, we call the pair of alleles homozygous. And when they differ from each other, you have a dominant and a recessive. It's called heterozygous. Codominance, like we talked about with blood type, occurs when a heterozygote's phenotype will be a mixture of traits from both alleles. The SAT biology test is likely going to test you on predicting the genotype and phenotype of offspring, and the easiest way to do this is by creating a Punnett square. Along the sides of the box, you indicate the genotypes of the two parents, and within each square, you combine the male and female alleles to create a potential genotype for your offspring. One of the 23 pairs of chromosomes within all human cells, besides gametes, are known as sex chromosomes, and all the other chromosomes are known as the autosomes. Male sex chromosomes have a genotype XY, and females have a genotype XX. Mothers will always pass on the X chromosome to their offspring, so the father's gametes determine whether the individual is going to be a male or a female by contributing either an X or a Y. Gregor Mendel is known as the father of genetics, and he came up with three laws after working with pea plants. The first law is the law of dominance, which says that certain alleles are dominant to others in a monohybrid cross. Next is the law of segregation, which states that alleles will separate and recombine during the cross, kind of just like the way we construct a Punnett square. We separate the alleles out, and then they recombine together. Lastly is the law of independent assortment, which states that two traits segregate randomly and that the four alleles can combine to give us four different gametes. So essentially what this means is that your two traits when you make your Punnett square segregate randomly. A dihybrid cross presents a cross between plants with two different characteristics, so instead of only looking at height or only looking at color, you do both together. Two double heterozygous phenotypes will create a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio. This is super important just to remember in case they give you something like this, you don't have to do the entire square out. You can also use the rules of probability to determine the ratio of your offspring. In this case, we're trying to determine the percentage or the ratio of plants that are tall and have purple flowers. And to do this, we do two monohybrid crosses of the tall allele and the purple flowers and we multiply the probability of it being tall and it being purple. And in doing this, it's 3 fourths times 3 fourths, which will give us 9 out of 16, which was the ratio that we got from our dihybrid cross. To work backwards and find the genotype of an original plant, biologists use test crosses in which they cross the plant with the recessive genotype and look at the offspring. Because the sex chromosomes X and Y carry certain genes, a sex-linked gene is a trait whose allele is carried on one of the sex chromosomes. Because the X chromosome is much larger than the Y, the X tends to carry more alleles. There are three X-linked traits you should know for the exam. The first one is hemophilia, which is a disorder of blood clotting. The second one is color blindness, and the third is male pattern baldness. Hemophilia specifically is an X-linked recessive trait, meaning that a female can only get it if she's homozygous for the X chromosome that carries the allele for hemophilia. For males, because they don't have another X chromosome, carrying a recessive X-linked trait for hemophilia will mean that the phenotype or the genes expressed are going to be hemophilia. When someone carries one recessive allele for a disease, they're called carriers because they don't actually exhibit the recessive allele, but they have the potential to pass it on. Remember that an X-linked recessive trait cannot go from father to son because the allele for an X-linked trait is located on the X chromosome, and the father only gives the Y chromosome to his son, not the X. Another diagram to be familiar with before the test is called a pedigree, which is a chart that shows the presence of a particular phenotype over multiple generations. 
Typically, males are represented by squares and females by a circle, and affected individuals have their shape shaded in. As well, as you go down the pedigree, you go towards deeper generations, and when two shapes are connected by a horizontal line, that means that they have mated. The two questions you will likely get asked about pedigrees are whether the condition shown is dominant or recessive, and whether the condition is sex-linked. To answer the first question, recessive conditions typically skip a generation, so if you notice on the pattern that between generations you have affected and then unaffected individuals, it's likely going to be a recessive condition. And to determine whether it is sex-linked, a shortcut is to count the number of males and females, and if the number of males is greater than the number of females, it is a sex-linked condition. However, this is not always the case, but if you're really crunched for time, this is what you should do. Now what I'm going to do is basically fill out all of our knowns, and this is really important for if you get a question that it just asks you about the genotype of a specific individual. So we're going to start off with our parents, one and two. Every organism, by the way, is labeled in a pedigree. And so with the parents, because they have offspring that are affected, you know that the affected individuals are recessive, homozygous recessive for the trait. And because of that, both of the parents needed to be carriers in order to pass on the recessive alleles. As well, you know that all of the other organisms that are affected are homozygous recessive, meaning that their parents must have been carriers. And lastly, you know that any unaffected individual has to carry at least one dominant allele.